An ordinarily quiet neighborhood turned into a time bomb this morning. Neighbors who had hoped to get some sleep on their day off were now all awakened by screaming and ready to tear apart the noisy couple from apartment 62. Some had already gone out into the entryway with their sleeves rolled up. Someone was just cursing, indignant, that it was impossible to live like that. In general, the quiet life of this house was over when it had barely begun. The mother and her two infants, who could bawl practically all day, had just moved out of the apartment, and now there was a period that confused everyone. There was a lull, and then the conflict flared up again. Whereas at first everyone waited patiently for the spouses to either reconcile or finally separate, now, not having waited for either outcome, Everyone was absolutely furious. The shouting on Sunday morning went over the edge. A large man banged on the door. He knocked and knocked, but no one opened it. The conflict only escalated. That's it. It's enough, the man shouted at the door. You idiots! Shouting on Sunday? It's you bloody idlers, and we are working people. Because of you, it's impossible to get a good night's sleep on your only day off. You piss me off. I'll call the police in exactly five minutes if you don't shut your mouths. I won't touch the woman. But you, Adam, if you try to come out, I'll tear you apart. Such freaks as you only teach with fists, because you do not understand in words, cried their neighbor, with all his might, hit the door which sagged under the impact of his fist. But, apparently, this did not help the neighbor to blow off steam. The neighbor roared again. Shut up already! Get a divorce or move out! You're not only ruining your life, but also the lives of others. And if you throw another tantrum, I'll break down your door and leave you both disabled. Mark my words. I won't get anything for it anyway. The conflict in the apartment really became quieter, as if the neighbor's threats had finally worked. He exhaled and went back to his apartment. The neighbors continued to argue, but without the hysterical shouting and wild yelling on the man's part. Their conflict was now more like a grumbling, which the neighbors were willing to tolerate. Naturally, the sleep of many was hopelessly ruined, because even earplugs could not save them from such conflicts. The two neighbors standing in the stairwell were having a heated discussion about what was going on in the apartment. Oh, I'm telling you, he came home stoned again. I saw him yesterday. He was coming out of the house drunk. He was so wobbly I thought he was about to fall, but all he did was cry and yell. God, but women are such fools after all. She could have divorced that drunkard and gambler and lived her life in peace. What do they have to share? No kids. Rented apartment. It's a shame about the family, my neighbor said indignantly. When they moved in, I thought they were finally normal neighbors. After that crazy mom with the babies, that couple seemed like nice people. What they were up to. It's still good that they stopped making a real brothel out of the house. And she puts up with such a man. The fool. The neighbor's indignation was boundless. She crossed her arms over her chest, and the gossip kept pouring out of her mouth. She was indignant, but she wanted to speak out more than ever. Especially another neighbor, too, was not averse to discuss the shouting neighbors who could not find in themselves even the slightest bit of conscience not to swear, at least at six o'clock on a Sunday morning. But soon the neighbors disappeared to their apartments, and the old but well-kept entryway was deserted. The door opened, and Emma came out of the very apartment where the door was now dented. She was holding her dog on a leash, who was shifting from paw to paw, just to get out on the street as soon as possible. Emma was crying, distraught. She was devastated. This marriage had changed her so much that she looked not twenty years old, but seven years older. She had only gotten worse lately. She had grown completely thin. She has sharp cheekbones. Constant tears caused bruises under her eyes. She just didn't look like the young girl she used to be. 
She walked down the stairs and out into the street, taking a plastic bag out of her pocket, preparing to clean up after her pet. The dog was the only thing she had left from her past happy life. This marriage was the biggest mistake of all. She would never forgive herself for letting herself fall in love with such a disgusting man. And now she found herself trapped here. The girl stood on the grass and watched the dog as it chose a place to rest. Finally, the dog lay down on the green grass and began to roll around on it, his favorite pastime. Emma took a bone out of her backpack and tossed it to the dog. It would bring her a rubber bone, and she would throw it again. Emma used to be afraid to leave the house at all, knowing full well that the neighbors hated her. But now she didn't care anymore. She looked tiredly at the house in which she could find no peace and watched the dog again. You, came the loud voice of the same neighbor who had been banging on the door this morning and even bent it. I'll have your guts for garter some day. What the hell are you yelling about? Your idiot husband yells so loud it makes my ears pop. I said I wouldn't hurt you, but I've changed my mind, roared the neighbor and lunged at Emma. But the white-haired mongrel dog broke away and, barking loudly, bared his teeth and stood between his mistress and his attacker. He pressed himself to the ground, grinning harder and harder. The neighbor stepped back and had his hand ready to defend himself, just in case the dog lunged. Call off your dog! I'll poison your mongrel freak, too. Why should we be punished like this? You fool! You were a beautiful woman. Why the hell did you get mixed up with that guy? Travis, get away from her, the wife said sharply, seeing her husband once again throwing himself at the neighbor. She was tired of these scandals herself, but not so tired as to attack the young woman. The husband looked back at his wife and went to the store. The neighbor peeked out the window and said quietly, but just enough for Emma to hear her. If you need help, just say the word and I'll help you. I got out of a toxic relationship like that myself. The truth is, I'm in almost the same relationship now. My husband is not a bad man, but you just drove him to it. I'm not responsible for him, but if I hear any more screaming, I'll call the police. You can come in the middle of the night with a suitcase, and I'll help you leave, okay? Emma nodded. She really needed help, but she did not know how to tell her neighbor that she had no documents. He took her passport, policy, driver's license, and even her bank card. But where he kept all her documents remained a mystery. Emma returned with the dog to the apartment where her drunken husband was sleeping. She went quietly into the kitchen to make breakfast. The dog followed her tail. She was really scared this morning. Only she wasn't afraid for herself, but for the dog. It was her only ray of light in this hopeless darkness. Emma looked at the dog sometimes and thought she should have given him into the good hands, just so the dog would be happy. But without a dog, she couldn't survive in this worthless apartment. Emma listened to her neighbor's words. She knew she had to get out herself. But what would she do without papers? What would she do without money? Most of all, she was afraid of being left to wander on the streets because she had no one to turn to. Emma had made her breakfast and was serving food when her husband woke up and entered the kitchen. With a hangover, he was ready to eat anything. Emma sat across from him, and the dog sat next to her. She rubbed it behind the ear. "'What did our neighbor catch you?' her husband asked even in spite of his spouse. The old geezer always thinks that he will not get anything for it. Well, my friends, will come. We'll prove to that ghoul that we're stronger than he is. That neighbor, Travis, thinks too much of himself, and how he and his wife fondle the whole house also hears, except that no one comes to yell under the door, indignantly at him laying in a plate the second portion of salad. Aren't you sick of it? We've got to get out of here. It's more like a surreal life than a normal one. Even with a hangover, you don't know why your dog barks when we fight. Is it protecting you? I'll kill it in you before she knows it. 
I still don't get it. Why the hell did you take an ordinary mongrel dog? You had the money, so you would have got a normal dog. But this is... looks like a Dalmatian. Only there are no spots. But it's still not a dog. A pit bull? An American bulldog? Wolfhounds? These are real dogs, the man continued. With a hangover, he was carrying everything. You were with another woman yesterday, the girl said, trying not to rekindle the conflict. She was silent again, because she didn't know how to find the words. Her husband's cheating was becoming so obvious that it had become unbearable, and he only smiled. And what will you do to me, reckless fool? If I have two women, you shouldn't worry about it. And further, set the table tonight. My friends will come. We will play. And if you dare even open your mouth in front of my friends, then you yourself know what I will do to you. So know your place, woman, and your place is at the stove, and clean the whole apartment before evening, he said with a smirk. We need so many snacks and drinks to last until the morning. And don't worry about the neighbors. James has everything under control. He will agree with the police that no one will come. He laughed when he saw her distraught, rather sorrowful face. Why are you staring at me? No one will save you if you get hurt. You can't even count on that. You're dumb. A woman is a woman. What are you talking about? It's your job to have kids and serve your man. Who do you think you are? That's it. This conversation is over, Adam said firmly. He got up and went into the living room. Emma heard the sound of the cap flying off a bottle of beer. Another bottle of beer. And it was only morning. Emma could feel the tears running down her cheeks. She was trapped, and it was getting harder and harder on her. Maybe it really would have been better to stay outside than in these conditions. The dog put his paws on her lap, reached up, and licked his mistress's crying face. The woman hugged the dog and felt its warmth. Her closest friend, her only close friend, even though this dog was not human, Emma could hear her husband talking to some friend as they discussed the evening drinking. Emma cringed, realizing that she would have to endure another nightmare, surrounded by her husband's friends. Only she had a hunch that tonight would turn out much worse. Emma went outside, leaving the dog at home. She wanted to buy groceries at the store, but immediately ran into the very same neighbor. Okay, I'm sorry, Travis said, rubbing the back of his head. Well, I got angry. I know what it's like for you. Well, rather, I don't know. My wife told me how you can get addicted to a man, and then you can't find your way out. You come to me if you need anything. I'll put pressure on him and you will go away if you need it. My wife told me it's not that simple, but you can count on us if anything happens, and I ain't gonna hurt your dog. You don't have to be afraid, but I can't guarantee your husband's safety, Travis said. He patted the girl on the shoulder and left, returning to the entrance. The girl bought the items on the list and returned home. She understood that in her situation, Support was more important than ever, but she could not ask for help. Suppose she ran away. Then what would happen? The neighbors don't know what Emma is actually rich, that every month she gets a lot of money on her card. They don't know that her husband has that card. Every time her husband went out, she looked for where he might have hidden her things, but she couldn't find any documents. She already suspected that he wasn't hiding her things in their apartment, but most likely with one of his friends, and she couldn't leave the dog behind. She knew that in her husband's hands, she would die. Emma got busy cooking. She knew that at first the company would only be drinking and playing cards, and when the concentration of alcohol reached a certain level, they would get a gorging attack and a real feast would begin. She cooked a roast. She put the potatoes to boil, prepared appetizers and main courses, but all she could think of was that she had to get away from here by any means necessary. No more tolerating the horrible attitude. She had to stop waiting for help. At the end of this week, 
She wanted to pack her bags. She would run away when her husband went to play with James. And I don't care how her escape ended. Better than being held hostage by her own husband. It was getting late, and Emma was going crazy waiting for the nightmare. She felt that tonight would be even worse, that tonight she would regret repeatedly that she had not run away in the morning, that she had not accepted the help of her compassionate neighbors. She had no idea what she would be going through. Gradually, suspicious individuals, whom Emma knew by name, began to come into the apartment. She hated every one of them. She would have imprisoned every one of them herself, but she couldn't. What can I say? She could not even control her own life, let alone someone else's. By the time everyone had gathered, and it was dark outside, the whole apartment was soaked with cigarette smoke. The smoke was everywhere. The rooms were saturated with the smell. At a large table in the living room, a company of twelve people sat. They were yelling, playing cards, betting big money. She hated that her husband had already lost a staggering amount. You have nothing left to bet, James laughed, when it was just the two of them playing. There was already a hundred thousand at stake, and it was time for her husband to get nervous. But what Emma heard really horrified her. I, I'll take my chances. What about my wife? said her husband, and smiled slyly. He was so eager to get these hundred thousand that for the chance he was willing to lose his wife. James, who always looked around and undressed Emma with his eyes, didn't hesitate and agreed. He accepted the bet, and the game began. Emma watched in horror as they threw the cards as her husband lost. He lost his wife in the cards and didn't even blink an eye. He threw the remaining cards in his hand on the table and spat on the floor. The woman, full of horror, backed away. Stop right there, you fool. Card debt is a matter of honor. Go with James to the bedroom. There's nothing to be done here. He grabbed the dog by the scruff of the neck and pulled him to him. The dog squealed. He put his hand around the dog's throat, and it wheezed. Or I'll strangle your dog right in front of you, roared the drunken husband. Then James threw the crying girl on the table right in front of the losing spouse. Emma sobbed and looked at the dog, who wheezed and wriggled in her husband's arms. But then the unbelievable happened. A shot rang out, and the sound ripped through the whole entryway, rattling the entrance. The door swung open, and an ugly, unsightly woman with full lips and a short haircut flew into the apartment. James's wife ran into the apartment with a rifle in her hand. She raised the gun and took aim. She shot sharply at the ceiling and plaster fell on everyone. Everyone instinctively dunked to the ground. You moral bastards! You're all going to jail, roared the woman. Not five minutes later, Travis burst into the apartment, taking advantage of the fact that the apartment was open, and the picture that appeared to his eyes was terrible. He staggered and froze. Hey, let her go, and you drop the dog. Drop it, I said. Emma, take the dog and go downstairs to my car, and you quickly give me the documents, shouted this ugly woman. Travis immediately understood everything. He stayed here to protect this brave woman just in case. Emma and the dog had already gone downstairs. They were in no danger. The police, who had been called an hour ago, still hadn't shown up. What? What documents? Adam grimaced. But the woman shot the lid of the chair right between his legs, and he screamed. He jumped on the spot. You think I'm kidding? I'll kill you, all here, but I don't want to go to jail. Quick, get her documents and her card over here, the woman roared. Her loud voice boomed through the room. Neighbors had already begun to gather in the entryway. Travis did not know that right now his wife was packing her things and giving Emma the business card of a smart lawyer for the coming unilateral divorce. Emma cried. She hadn't expected that so many people had been willing to help her all this time. She thought she was all alone, but in fact she was not. 
At that time, her husband broke the tiles in the bathroom and took the documents out of his hiding place, and he took the card out of his wallet. He gave everything to James's wife. She told Travis, Call the regional police department before I kill them here like flies. The local police won't come. They're all in it together. They waited for the police to arrive, and the real show began. Each of the people sitting here had an extensive list of things they were now going to serve time for. They could no longer rely on the local police, who would now also face punishment. The woman went downstairs to the car. She put the crying Emma and her dog in it. We will drive for a long time, and without stops, most likely. Only at gas stations. We will eat on the way, too. There's no turning back for both of us now, said Sarah. After Emma's words of thanks, Sarah hit the gas, and they drove off. Is the dog all right? Are you all right? Your documents and your card are here. That's it, Emma. You've had enough, said the woman, and now she was silent for a long time. She spoke again only when they had traveled three hundred miles and stopped for the first time at a gas station to refill the gasoline, walk the dog, and take food with them. They were back in the car again, and it was only now that Sarah was ready to tell the whole truth. I found out about you not long ago, about a month ago. I overheard my husband talking to yours. I've been living in fear myself all this time. I didn't know what to do, but I made up my mind to run away. And when I had a chance, I went to the regional police and told them everything. Turns out they've been looking for this gang for a long time, and all of them were facing serious sentences. The only thing was to catch them all together, so that when one was caught, all the others wouldn't run away. I said I'd get them together if they'd let you and me go at once without interrogation. They already have a full list of claims on these freaks, if you can put it that way. I had to go back. I waited a moment, got my gun, and came running to you. I didn't know they were going to hit on you, also grabbed your dog, the freaks. I knew right away he was threatening you. Now we have to leave. Don't worry, no one will look for us. They don't need to. But I know if we don't leave, We'll be haunted by memories until the end. You've got plenty of money. You won't be lost. And I've got a house there. You can buy your own. And if you want, you can stay with me. I've already moved the kids. You're the only one left. You don't have to thank me. You had a lot of people helping you. In a situation like this, women have to stick together to protect each other. They rode in the dark of night. The dog was dozing soundly resting his head on his mistress's lap, exhausted physically and emotionally. Emma also fell asleep. Sarah turned on the radio quietly, occasionally glancing at the passengers who were now asleep in the back seat. She would never forget the nightmare she had seen at that apartment. She was terrified to imagine what that girl would have gone through if she hadn't saved her. Now everything was going to be all right. Everything was bound to work out fine. Sarah stopped at dawn to fill up the car and buy some hot food. She walked the dog and led it to her sleeping mistress. Emma awoke only when the car started up again. Sarah handed her a bag of hot hamburger and Emma gratefully ate it, enjoying the taste. She didn't forget to share it with the dog. The dog was obviously tired from the road and was starting to cry like a little baby. It's okay. We'll be home soon. Just a little longer. I'm sorry I called the woman. She's selling a cottage. We can go to her place first. Maybe you can buy it so you have a place to live. You said you wanted to live alone. I respect your choice. I even envy it. I'd like to be alone in this situation myself, but I have children. It's about 13 miles to go, maybe a little less, so we'll be there soon. You better tell me why the dog has such a strange name. Odette? Sarah asked. She wanted to distract Emma from the torrent of gloomy thoughts and disgusting memories of the night before. It was a silly thing to do. I don't know. One morning I was out jogging and suddenly I saw kids put a snow-white puppy on some plank and lowered it into the water in the pond in our park. They were laughing and the puppy stumbled and fused and the board chipped over. I chased the kids away and jumped in. I got her dog and, and inhaled water. 
We spent three hours at the vet's office while they checked her up. I loved a cartoon when I was a kid where the sorcerer turned the princess into a swan. Well, I thought, it's white, and I found it in the water. So that's the swan. So it's Odette, the swan princess. Then Emma laughed. She smiled, remembering how ridiculous and pretty a puppy Odette was. While she was talking, they drove up to a small cottage where they were met by a kindly hostess. James's wife explained where she now lived and that Emma could call for help at any time. Emma hugged her savior, thanked her warmly, and said goodbye. Left alone with the cottage owner and the dog, she toured the house and was delighted. She immediately prepaid, and delighted by the successful transaction, the landlady left to begin preparing the transfer of the documents. Emma was alone for the first time in such a long time, and for the first time she felt happy. She couldn't even believe she was finally safe. She had survived a real nightmare, and now she truly deserved happiness. A month later, she had already received her divorce and the deed to the house, which was now entirely her own. The girl was learning to live again. She was learning to live safely, and even though she sometimes had nightmares, she was happy. Her husband had been sentenced to twelve years, but knowing his character, it was safe to expect that he would never get out of prison. Emma sat on the soft grass by the river, the beautiful, tranquil river that spilled three miles from her house soothed her. The dog was running by the river. It went into the water twice, but quickly lost interest in swimming. Two children were building a castle out of river sand and laughing. The bits and apples were lying next to them. Sarah, who had lost a lot of weight since she had stopped eating stress, was standing waist-deep in the water. She was already coming out treading carefully on the rocky bottom. They now lived side by side and were like family to each other. Have a swim. The water is lovely, the woman said, smiling broadly. It's beautiful here. Look at the river. They say there's a big backwater. Fishermen sit there. We could go fishing, too. I've been fishing all my childhood, and I'll teach you, said Sarah. She sat down next to her friend and asked more quietly, Do you still have nightmares? Emma nodded at her question. Nothing. It will pass. We're both safe now. I hope the children will forget what they've been through. They're so happy now, so joyful. My heart is bleeding to think of the nightmare we lived in. We had enough suffering. It's time for a fresh start. You have nothing to worry about. Your ex-husband died in prison. Yes, it became a lot easier, honestly, admitted Emma who was informed about the death of her ex-husband from an overdose. At that moment, she felt like a weight off her mind. She was learning to live happily. She was learning not to be afraid to live and to wake up every morning. She didn't rush herself. She understood that it would take a long time to get her life together. But still, she was much happier than before.